As the conductor of the Black Dyke Mills Band, one of the greatest British brass bands of all, James Watson has earned international acclaim. Also a faculty member at the Academy, he conducted a reading of traditional works for brass band in a joint rehearsal of Brooklyn College and Royal Academy students. The biggest thing, perhaps, though, that Britain has to offer in brass is the, the brass band. And its, its repertoire and its idiom are, are quite unique. And I think Doug has had a, a passion for, for brass bands for, for many years. And I, I felt that he should come here and work with one of our, well, with one of the best brass band conductors this century. James Watson. This session introduced the Brooklyn players to this uniquely British institution and helped prepare them for their performance with Regent Brass, one of the finest brass bands in central and southern England. The traditional British brass band is nothing less than a national phenomena. Inextricably linked to the country's social structure and musical heritage, Brass bands date back hundreds of years and are an integral part of Britain's rich musical fabric. Hedwig realized that the experience would not be complete unless the players were exposed to one of these bands and the unique cultural elements which surround them. British brass banding, you know, is, it's more than a way of life, it's more than a religion, really. It's more than an obsession, it's like sort of meat and drink to a bandsman. There are literally hundreds of brass bands across the country, and most maintain a completely amateur status. Amateur only in the sense that none of the players are paid, but their technical mastery and musical expression rivals that of many professionals. The music's my job and my hobby. Paul Fensom has been a brass player and educator for over 50 years and is currently the conductor of Regent Brass. Brass banding's a phenomenon because I can remember as a, a five-year-old starting on a cornet, I knew three notes, bang, I was in the band. And I sat on third cornet with my legs swinging off the chair. Um, and I loved it. But every time I saw a C, a D, or an E, then I could play those. And then I had to wait for another couple of bars till they came around again. But just that thrill of being in a 40, 50-piece band uh, and just sitting in the middle of it was, was enough. When contacted by Hedwig, Fensom invited the Brooklyn College Brass Ensemble to perform a joint concert with Regent Brass. I was very pleased to accept the invitation that Paul Fensom extended to me and to my ensemble. Um, lots of reasons. First, I knew it would be a great kick. Everyone would really enjoy this. But also uh, because I knew that the majority of the professional uh, brass players in England had come from this background, this background and tradition. And so I felt that it was essential for my students to participate in some way in that experience to fully understand what it is that makes up the, the uniquely British style of brass playing. So I uh, hope you enjoy it. Historically, these bands have played a very high caliber of music. Originally, the idea was to bring music from the concert stages of London to people in regional communities. But brass bands also evolved as a way for working men within collieries, mills, and factories to socialize and build a sense of group identity by playing music together. Led by Hedwig, the musicians began to imitate and absorb key elements of the typical British brass band style of playing. Pointed, clear articulation, a lyrical sense to the musical line, a rich, resonant sound, incredible endurance, and a startling degree of unity and consistency of musical approach among all members of the band. Saturday's performance of the region brass at the church was probably the, the greatest experience just because of the, the sound, just the, I mean, just how, um, how resonant it was and how, how deep it was. And even in like the Olympic fanfare, it was just so moving. 
to be able to actually go to a local uh, town where a brass band has been rehearsing, in this case, for years together as one group. Um, it's so much of a team effort here. There are no egos whatsoever. Everybody is not only friends, but they also are truly um, interested in the way the group sounds as one. To enhance the performance and educational aspects of the project, a number of historical, cultural, and related practical experiences were planned. Some of the finest brass instruments in the world are manufactured in the Boozy and Hawks factory just outside of London. On the tour, the players track the process of how sheet metal is bent into tubes and formed into bell sections, and examined the unique patented construction process. This part of the process over here is done by a person bending the metal by hand, whereas this section over here is a laborer placing the tube in and a hydraulic pressure moves it around and forms it precisely. One advantage of an experience like this is that it allows the students the opportunity to feel more connected to their own instruments by experiencing the process of how it's constructed. I knew this could only help in musical expression. Once the final plating and engraving was complete, the players even had the opportunity to sample the instruments. One of the finest collections of antique brass instruments in the world is housed at London's Horniman Museum. During a private tour, the students view this extraordinary collection. Some of the instruments, though all related to modern day instruments, appeared odd and exotic to the players. Of particular interest to my students were the natural trumpets, which prior to the first quarter of the 19th century were the only kind of trumpets available. The players on those instruments would achieve different notes by fluctuations and variations in lip tension, tongue level, and air compression. The natural trumpet for example, is just such a good way to learn the modern instrument because the modern instrument is seven natural trumpets in, in, in one. The unique thing about the natural trumpet at the Royal Academy is that it is a compulsory part of their curriculum. My students had a chance not only to see these instruments, to handle them, to hear them being performed. I would like to incorporate some of the natural trumpet performance and practice into my work with students here at Brooklyn College because I think it will support a really full understanding of the modern day instrument.